Welcome to one of the UK's most vital but least known habitats, salt marsh. It's wild, it's wonderful, and it's got some serious superpowers. But there is a problem, we've lost a huge amount of it. So why does it matter? And what does salt marsh actually do? And how are we working to bring it back? Well, stick around because you're going to be diving into the always salty, sometimes squelchy, and surprisingly spectacular world of salt marsh. So I'm Alice Laver. I'm the site manager at Stewart Marshes. So first things first, what is salt marsh? So imagine this, you're standing here on the edge of the coast, the air is salty, the ground is soft with mud beneath your feet, and all around you, you've got swaying grasses, you can hear birds calling and spot little crabs scuttling on the ground. And if you're lucky enough, you'll even see little fish startling through the creeks. Welcome to the salt marsh. Salt marshes are one of the UK's most important, yet often overlooked habitats. You'll find them tucked away along estuaries, behind sand dunes, and it's where sea water meets the land, where the tides bring in mud, sand and silt, which settle in sheltered areas. And over time, salt tolerant plants will start to grow. These in turn stabilise the land and create a unique ecosystem. We also have valuable salt marshes at a number of our WWT wetland centres and here at WWT Stewart Marshes, where they act as an important buffer between the land and the sea. Salt marshes, however, don't always look the same. Some salt marshes are lush and green, covered in swaying grasses. Others are more muddy and shaped by winding channels carved out by the tides. Or sometimes they're actually shaped by human design, like here at Steert. You'd be forgiven if you thought that there was nothing here at first, but trust me, wherever you find salt marsh, one thing's for certain, they are a hive of wildlife activity, breeding with all sorts of nature, hiding in the creeks, down in the mud, and nestled in amongst the reeds. You just sometimes have to look a bit more closely. And the wildlife that lives here is truly spectacular. In the winter, you'll find dunlin, curlew and golden plover picking their way through the mud, looking for tiny creatures to eat. And then in the summer, we have other wading birds like lapwing and red shank nesting down in among the long salt marsh grass. And if you're really lucky, you'll get to hear the song of the, the skylark pouring down from the sky above on a perfect day like this, hopefully. Wow. Skylark just above our heads. Got a lovely flock of shell duck just passing over. The Bridgewater Bay is actually famous for, the, uh, for its shell duck because we get huge rafts of molting shell duck that are flightless for several weeks. Fish, including young bass, flounder and mullet, use the marsh as a nursery, hiding from predators in the shallow waters. And even otters have been spotted in salt marshes like this one and the rare Natadak toads rely on the brackish pools of some salt marshes to breed. They are biodiversity hotspots. Let's not forget the plants. These are some of the toughest in the UK, and they have to be to survive storms, salty water, the push and pull of tides, and being repeatedly exposed to the air and then submerged underwater every day. For example, where I am stood right now, last week during one of the biggest high tides, I would have had the sea up to my waist and now you can see it's now dry. Plants like sea aster, marsh samphire and sea lavender do not only look beautiful, but they also help hold the marsh together, stopping erosion. These flowering plants also provide key food sources for insects, pollinating as they go, and in turn providing a meal for birds and bats. Salt marshes are a haven for species, even in the winter, as the saline conditions means that they never fully freeze. But here's the thing, as amazing as salt marshes are, they're disappearing, and that's a big problem. Not just for wildlife, but for us too, and even for our fight against climate change. So what's happening to them? Let's take a closer look. Would you believe that in England alone, we've lost 85% of our salt marshes since 1860? And that's a massive chunk. 
that's about 198,000 hectares or the equivalent of 283,000 football pitches, roughly five times the size of the Isle of Wight. We've lost them in places like the Wash, the Forth and Thames Estuary, the Solent and along both the Welsh and English sides of the Severn. But why? Salt marsh loss isn't new. As far back as the Roman times, people saw salt marshes as wasted land and for centuries we've been draining them for farmland, industry and housing. Medieval farmers built seawalls to keep the tides out, like here at the reserve at WWT Slimbridge. And by the 1800s, massive chunks of salt marsh had vanished, reclaimed for agriculture. Great for crops, not so great for nature. And then there were the docks and the industrial sites. Places like the Thames Estuary, Humber and Mersey saw their salt marshes disappear under concrete as access to the sea became important for commerce. The flat, shallow land was perfect for development and salt marshes were often drained for docks and factories. Salt marsh loss isn't just a thing of the past, it's still happening today. We've got climate change and rising sea levels are putting even more pressure on these habitats. And so in some places, they're disappearing faster than ever. One big problem, coastal squeeze. When sea levels rise, salt marshes would naturally move inland. But if there's a sea wall or an urban area in the way, there's nowhere left for that salt marsh to go meaning that that vital ecosystem is at risk of being overwhelmed and submerged by rising sea water levels. Even the tougher salt marsh plants can't survive being underwater constantly, so eventually the marsh just drowns. Overgrazing by livestock in some areas can diminish the seed bank and reduce biodiversity and lead to grasses taking over that crowd out all the other species. Erosion is another biggie. Stronger storms, boat wakes, and even changes in how rivers deposit sediment mean that some marshes are wearing away faster than they can rebuild. And let's not forget pollution. Agricultural runoff can overload wetlands with nutrients, throwing the whole system out of balance. And microplastics is now showing up in the mud and the water. And when we lose salt marsh, we lose all the amazing benefits it provides. So salt marshes aren't just pretty landscapes, they've got planet protecting superpowers. They're carbon catching champions. They buffer us from floods, protecting our coastal defenses from erosion. They're fantastic for wildlife and they even help clean our water. They're good for our mood and they bring in money to local communities. Without salt marsh, we'd see worse flooding, more erosion and higher carbon emissions and our wildlife would lose vital habitats. So how do we stop this loss? Well, let's talk about what we're doing at WWT to create, restore, protect and manage this valuable habitat. So at WWT, we're not just talking about saving salt marsh, we're taking action to bring it back. And we've already had some big wins. Take WWT Steert Marshes in Somerset. It's one of the UK's largest coastal realignment projects. Since 2014, we've restored over 250 hectares of salt marsh. It's storing carbon, protecting homes from flooding, creating a wildlife paradise, and playing a unique role supporting people's physical and mental health. And thanks to a £21 million donation from Aviva, we're restoring up to a further 250 hectares of salt marsh, starting with a 148 hectare nature reserve at Orr in the Forest of Dean. And in an exciting collaboration with the Bristol Port Company, we're working on the design and future management of a further 130 hectares of intertidal and wetland habitat just to the west of WW Steart Marshes will actually be in this area just behind me. And this is just the start. We have ambitions to create even more and inspire others to do the same. And it's not just about restoring and creating salt marsh. It's also about the science. We're carrying out world leading research into the benefits of these understudied habitats. We're looking at the rate of carbon capture, how quickly species spread into newly created salt marsh, and the effect being near wetlands has on our well-being, to name just a few. 
We're also helping to develop a new salt marsh code to fund salt marsh restoration through carbon credits, potentially paving the way for millions of pounds of investment. So what can you do? Well, you can visit a salt marsh near you or one of the salt marshes at WWT's wetland centres. Support WWT's work or just spread the word why salt marsh matters. The more people who care, the better chance we have to save it. And this is our chance to bring back one of the UK's most powerful habitats. So let's make sure salt marsh has a future.